Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about electronic implementation of um, operations of mathematical logic. And again, that's very important uh, because it's used in all different uh, uh, computers, telephones, televisions, etc., etc. Now, um, last lecture was basically kind of a general lecture. I was talking about logical operations. Um, remember a few things from mathematical logic about true and false and operations of disjunction, conjunctions, etc. Now this lecture will be about implementation only and implementation of only one operation, logical operation. It's a logical or or disjunction. Um, and then the next lectures will be uh, each one very short, by the way, uh, about implementation of other logical operations. Now, um, the implementation I'm, uh, I will be talking about is very sketchy. It's very, I would say, primitive. I mean, that's the beginning. And again, that's my purpose, to introduce you into the beginning of how all these thoughts about implementation of logical operations in electronics actually came about. Um, I, I, I don't quite know who exactly was the first author of that particular model, and there are other models, there are ad other implementations of the same ideas, uh, but no matter what it is, it's definitely much more complex right now, um, but uh, the idea is exactly the same, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. This lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens. It's implemented, it's presented on unizor.com website. The website contains lectures, um, notes for each lecture, basically like a textbook, broken into individual lectures and individual lessons, if you wish. Um, the website has prerequisite course called Math for Teens, and it's mandatory for um, learning physics to know mathematics quite well, including calculus, vector algebra, logic, like in this particular case. Um, what else? Um, well, the site is totally free. There are no uh, advertisement, no financial strings. You don't even have to log in if you don't want to. Um, there are exams on the website, and I do suggest you to take wherever they are available. So, back to implementation of logical or or disjunction. That's how it's called, disjunction in logic. First of all, again, let me remind you very briefly that um, the agreement among people who basically make all these devices which are using the mathematical logic is that the positive potential at one particular point indicates um, uh, true or one and zero potential relative to the ground or relative to other maybe parts of the electronic schema um, is indicating false or zero. And right now we are talking about this about disjunction. So disjunction. And that's basically uh, I will use one and zero instead of true and false. It's just easier for me. So we are talking about zero vertical bar or arithmetic sign plus is used for this junction. Should result in this, this should result in this, this uh, should result in this and this should result in this. So these are rules of mathematical logic. So if, for instance, a true statement and a true statement, and now we are talking about statement like this or this, obviously if both of them are true, then both of this connected with an or sign will be true as well. Now, if for instance 1 and 0, so 
one event is true and another event is false and we are talking that happened this or that. Well, yes, if one of them is true, then that's the result is obviously true. So in all cases where at least one of those components, this is the binary logical operation. When one of the arguments is true, then the result will be true. And only if both are false, didn't happen uh, event A and didn't happen event B. Now the question is whether A or B happened. Answer is no, because ni ni neither of those happened. So this is the logic, this is the rules of disjunction. They came from logical uh, operations, from mathematics, and they are used in decision-making. Whenever we want to know actually what to do, to go to left, to go to right, we have to make some kind of a decision, and decision is based on logic. <coughs> now, the schema which I suggest, it doesn't mean this is the only one, but this is one of the first ones which probably came to somebody's mind, is which, which implements this electronically is the following. So you have two input contacts, call them A and B. And these contacts will have certain potential, either positive, which means the contact uh, implements the idea of true or one, and uh, or, or um, zero, neutral. Uh, which means no excess or no deficiency of electrons at, at this contact. And that represents um, false, logical false, or, or zero. Okay? Now, from these contacts, we go to wires, and we connect them to anodes of diodes. So these are diodes. Now, you remember that diode is, now uh, this is anode, and this is cathode, and this is heated. So we will put something like this, some kind of a heat element. So cathode is heated, and if there is uh, there are some electrons here. If there is no deficiency of electrons, there is an electronic cloud because it's heated. So electrons are just um, uh, going out from the surface of the of the wire. And if anode is positively charged, these electrons will be attracted, and there is a one-directional movement of electrons from the hot cathode to cold positively charged anode. And that's only in this direction, because if anode is negative, for instance, and cathode is positive, there is no electronic, there is no electron cloud, there is no thermionic emission, as, the, uh, as, as it's called. So thermionic emission is only on the cathode, which means electrons can go from cathode to anode, and only in case anode is positive and cathode is uh, negative or neutral not the other way around. So the uh, electric uh, current goes only this way, from hot cathode, if it's at least neutral or even negatively charged, to positively charged anode. Anode must be positively charged. If it's, if it's neutral, there is no attraction. And that's why uh, electrons will just concentrate around the cathode, even if there is a thermionic emission, but will not go any further. So this is the diode. And this end is uh, anode, and this end is cathode. Now, from this, I will have a C contact. These are my input. Input voltages, if you wish. And this is my output. Now, what I have to do is I have to put some kind of a load resistance, resistor, and ground. Ground is neutral, always. It's a, a source of infinite number of electrons whenever we want it. So let's just analyze what happens in each of these cases. So this is my A, and this is my B. So, so 
uh, ground is always neutral, right? So now in this case, A and B both are neutral. Well, the cathode is heated always, that's true. So there is some kind of electronic, uh, electrons cloud, thermionic emission around the cathode. However, there is no difference in potential. There is no uh, positively charged anode here. Anode is zero, which means neutral. So electrons will not go there. So they will just stay. So whatever amount of electrons uh, exist everywhere, and initially we are assuming that everywhere there is a neutral, nothing is basically uh, charged in any way. So uh, this particular point and obviously output is also neutral. Well, neutral means zero. Potential is neutral relatively to the ground. It's connected to the ground, but there is no current. The electrons are not moving. So there is this resistor um, which doesn't really play any kind of a resistance role there is no current, electrons are not moving anywhere. So zero and zero will give you zero. So this actually is fine. So this is C. Next case. So this is one, which means there is a positive charge. And this is zero, which means it's neutral. Now, cathode is heated and there is an electron's cloud on the cathode, there is a thermionic emission. Now this thing is positive, right? We're talking about this case. It's a true, which means it's positive. So electrons will move here, from right to left in this particular case. Now, what happens? Well, there is a deficiency of electrons here, developed, right? Since electrons, heat, heated electrons from the electron's cloud goes this way, and basically disappear because we are maintaining positive charge here, right? Which means there is some, some kind of a uh, consumption of electrons on this side. So this is always positively charged, okay? Constant voltage, let's say plus five, plus five volt or whatever. So electrons will go this way, which means there will be a deficiency of electrons in this wiring, right? Well, deficiency of electrons here, neutral here, so there is a difference in potential. So electrons will go from ground to this sink. And they will go, and again, they will be heated here. Well, heated here as well, but from here it doesn't go anywhere because B is zero in this particular case. It's neutral. But in this case, electrons will go. So electrons will always flow this way, which means that there is a current from here to here. And considering this is a resistor, there will be a difference in potential, otherwise there is no um, there is no way. So electrons from here go here, and the deficiency of electrons will be still maintained all the time, because no matter how many new electrons are coming from the ground to compensate this deficiency, will immediately go out. So obviously this point, and this point, and this, and this, so all this wiring will have a deficiency of electrons, because it will always go this way which means deficiency of electrons is positively charged. Positively charged, which means it's true or one in our logical lingo, right? Great. So this one is OK as well. Now this one is exactly similar. There is no difference between A positively and B neutral, or A neutral and B positively. So we are not even talking about this. It's very easy. Exactly the same logic. Electrons will go this way which means there is still deficiency of electrons here. There is no uh, movement here, because even if there is a deficiency here, there is no thermionic cloud on the anode, so electrons will, no, will, will not go this way. So electrons will go from here, from the ground, to here. And that means that that would be a deficiency of electrons here, which means C will be positive. And finally, if both of them are positive, <coughs> so both anodes, both anodes will be consuming electrons. So the flow of electrons will be even greater. And it's exactly the, it's exactly the same logic. The deficiency of electrons here, because there is a current here from neutral, and there is a current, so this should be less 
our potential than zero, which means it will be a deficiency of electrons, because all of them will go this way. Deficiency of electrons is positive, so that's why we have one here. So this particular logic, on a very simple level, implements the logical operation of disjunction, of logical or operation. Um, well, basically that's it. Now, as far as practical aspects, now, I'm uh, explaining how anode is working on an old um, uh, electronic vacuum tube uh, technology. doesn't matter. Right now it's a different technology. It's semiconductors, it's integrated schema, etc. But the principle is exactly the same. Electrons are going from one end to another and not the other way around. So this is basically the uh, main principle of the diode as it, it's implemented anywhere, whether it's a vacuum tube or a semiconductor or whatever. So <coughs> it's just simpler for me to explain it on the level of vacuum tubes because that's how it's all started. And again, my, um, uh, my idea is that to explain as everything started and the first coming to somebody's mind is better for general understanding because the details can be um, changed later on but the principle of, Im of implementation uh, is more or less the same. Now what's the um, uh, I would say deficiency of uh, this particular implementation? Well think about this way if we are talking about positive as a constant voltage let's say plus 5 volt for instance then if this is positive 5 volts and this is negative there will be one kind of a current and we can probably adjust this resistor so this will be also 5 volts but if both of them are then the current will be more intense and there is some mechanism which is not really um, here which is supposed to be adjust the voltage so it will be also 5 volts regardless if one or both are at 5 volts, at plus 5 volts, right? So there are certain deficiencies of, of, the, of the implementation of this idea, but the idea is the same. We obviously can think about what to do if this voltage is increasing and we can just uh, reduce it somehow. But these are details which I'm not going to go into. This is a, for, for professionals whenever they're going into this. For you, I would like to really explain just the idea behind uh, the logical implementation um, in, in, in electronics. Um, basically, that's it. Uh, you probably should be... Um, I, I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. It's more, more or less exactly the same thing, but again, it's a description of how exactly electrons are flowing from one place to another in whatever case. Um, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.